In the previous video, we defined the general transforms between Cartesian and spherical coordinates. Now, we will continue with integrals. As we already covered many examples in the cylindrical coordinates video, I will keep this one a bit shorter. Let us start with line integrals, where we need to define the small line element ds. This element is given by one small step along the curve minus the original position. In the cylindrical coordinates video, we derived that this can be expressed using our scaling factors h. Simply insert the expressions for the scaling factors. As an example, assume that theta and phi are constant and we are integrating a vector field in the radial direction. This curve would be a straight line from origin. Here we can visualize the s as a small step in the radial direction, the r r hat. This means that we insert the r r hat as the s. If you look at another example, where r and phi are constant, and we solve the vector integral, we get this curve in the theta direction. Here, we can add one point at the angle theta, and take a small step d theta. Now, the line element would be given by r d theta d dot. Hence, this is what we insert as this. Finally, our last case will be when r and theta are constant. We still integrate the vector field in the phi direction. Now we can add one point and define the angles theta and phi for this point. Note that the distance to the z axis is r sinus theta. Then we make a small step in phi. Our ds is now r sinus theta d phi phi hat. Which is what we would insert into the integral. These are the three simple curves we can create in spherical coordinates. For more complicated curves, you need to include a parameterization of the curve, as I have shown in other videos. But we'll skip these complicated cases here. Next, we will move to surface integrals. Again, we will only cover the basic cases where one coordinate is constant. For these cases, the general expression from general orthogonal coordinates is this. Assume that k is the constant direction and the surface varies in i and j. Then the surface element is given by hi, hj, dui, duj with normal in the uk direction. Let us start with the case where the radius is the constant. This means that we integrate over theta and phi. We can insert the values for h theta and h phi. Let us visualize this surface element. Start by drawing the position. and make a small step in theta and phi, which gives the surface element. This surface element has size r d theta and r sinus theta d phi, which gives the area r squared sinus theta d theta d phi. We can see that area varies with the radius and with theta. Now, set up a general integral with constant limits integrating the function f over the surface. Let us visualize what kind of surfaces we can create with this integral. Using the full integral for both, this creates a spherical shell 
is the normal vector pointing outwards. The normal vector is given by r hat. Let's first vary the constant radius. Then vary the lower limit for theta. And the upper limit for theta. Lower limit for phi. And the upper limit for phi. While we normally let phi go between 0 and 2 pi, we can consider other intervals if that fits our surface. One question we can ask is, why did we choose to let theta go between 0 and pi, and phi between 0 and 2 pi? Why not the opposite, which also could cover the full sphere? To understand this, Let's look at the whole range when phi goes between 0 and 2 pi. All of these intermediate surfaces could be realistic surfaces to integrate over. Let's look at what would happen if we instead let theta be the one that goes all the way to 2 pi. When we reach beyond pi for theta, the surfaces look like this. If we also reduce phi a bit, it looks like this. When would you ever need to solve an integral over a surface with this shape? For completeness, I will let theta go all the way to 2 pi to show that we would cover the full sphere here as well. The main conclusion though is that the surfaces we get when theta is larger than pi are not really common to integrate over, except for the single case of the full sphere. Compare this to the more logical surfaces when phi is the variable that goes to 2 pi. This is one motivation why the limits should be chosen the way they are for spherical coordinates. Let's continue to the next surface integral, where theta is the constant. This means that we integrate over r and phi. Insert the values for the scaling factors. Let's visualize this surface element as well. Make a small step in r and a small step in phi. The radius step is simply the r, while the step in phi has length r sinus theta the phi. Watch how the element changes when we vary the radius and the angle theta. Let's set up our integral over this surface with constant limits and visualize what surfaces we can create from this integral. With a full phi interval, our surface looks like a cone. Here we can place the normal pointing down. The normal vector will be theta hat. Start by varying the constant theta. Then vary the inner radius. And the outer radius. The lower phi value. And the upper phi value. These are examples of surfaces you can create with constant limits to this integral.
Finally, the case where phi is the constant. This means that we integrate over r and theta. Insert scaling factors. Let's draw the surface element. We take a step in r and in theta. The radius step length is the r, and the theta step has length r d theta. This is how the element changes with the radius. It does not change area with theta. Next, set up the integral of the surface with constant limits. And visualize what surfaces we can create with this integral. The full integral is a half circle. The normal vector is phi hat. This happens if you vary the constant phi. We can vary the inner radius. And we can vary the outer radius. The lower theta value and the upper theta value. Let us do one full example of surface integral in spherical coordinates. We will take one example from fluid mechanics and solve the pressure integral over the surface. We have been given the surface integral for the force. What is the force in the submerged sphere with radius r at depth h? First, let us show a 2D cross section of the water. Z equals 0 is at the water surface. We can then draw the sphere at depth h. Now we can start solving the integral. First, note that z equals 0 is the expression for the pressure at the water surface. But use spherical coordinates. The sphere should be centered around origin. Hence, introduce the translation of the coordinate system by introducing z prime is z plus h. This gives z prime equals 0 at the center of the sphere. Reorder to get an expression for z and insert z into the integral. z prime is our coordinate in spherical coordinates and can be replaced with r cosine theta. We are integrating a sphere with a normal pointing outwards. Now we can set up the surface element we had for the case of constant radius. And insert this as our surface element in the integral. We can also rewrite the surface integral to integrate over theta and phi with the limits of a full sphere. Insert the radius of the sphere as the coordinate r. As the normal vector varies over the surface, we must rewrite it in terms of our constant unit vectors x hat, y hat and z hat. Insert expression for r hat. Both x hat and the y hat integrals are over a full period, which means that they will integrate to zero. This can also be seen from symmetry of the original problem, as the force should be pointing up.
There is no phi dependence in this integral. Therefore, multiply by the interval length 2 pi. Distribute. This will have the following primitive function. Cosinus theta square will evaluate to the same value where we insert 0 and pi, and will therefore be 0. Insert the limits. Cosinus pi is minus 1, and cosinus 0 is 1. Simplify this expression. And we get the final expression for the force, which is the density times g times the volume of the sphere in the set hat direction. Finally, we have volume integrals in spherical coordinates. The general volume element can be written as this. Use that r is 1, theta is 2, and phi is 3. And insert the scaling factors. Let us visualize this volume element. Here we make small steps in all directions. The radial step length is the r, the theta step length is r d theta, and the phi hat step length is r sinus theta d phi. Illustrate the radial dependence and the theta dependence. Next, write a general integral over a volume with constant limits. And let's visualize what kind of volumes we can create with this integral. With the full values for theta and phi, we get a sphere. Start by varying the lower limit for phi. And the upper limit for phi. Then vary the inner radius and the outer radius. The lower limit for theta and the upper limit for theta. This will be the final example for this video. Next up will be derivatives for spherical corners. Thank you.